When you see a product advertised as having nanotechnology, are you just a little bit skeptical like I am? We'll be testing Miller's Oil today, which claims to have low friction technology, nanotechnology, against Pennzoil Ultra Platinum. So let's get the testing underway and see which brand is the best. We'll test the Miller's Nano Drive Oil and this electronic fuel injected generator to see if it offers better fuel efficiency than Pennzoil. We'll see which brand flows the best when the oil is extremely cold. We'll see if the NanoDrive oil offers better protection against engine wear. We'll compare both oils to see which one is the best at resisting thermal breakdown and evaporation. I paid an independent oil testing lab to provide us with a detailed report on the oil. Before we begin our first test, I need to send off the Miller's NanoDrive oil to an oil testing lab. I always shake oil containers before sending off oil samples for testing since part of the additive package may actually fall out of suspension and settle at the bottom of the container. The oil lab will provide us with a lot of great information on the oil's anti-wear additive package, detergent and dispersant content, as well as the oil's total base number or the ability of the oil to resist becoming acidic over time. I already had the Pennzoil Ultra Platinum tested a while back. We'll be testing the Miller's Oil against this Pennzoil Ultra Platinum Full Synthetic SAE 5W30. It claims to keep pistons 25% cleaner than leading synthetic oil. What's very interesting about this Pennzoil is that it uses Pure Plus technology, which is a revolutionary process that converts pure natural gas into the first of its kind synthetic base oil in Pennzoil Ultra Platinum. It claims cleanest pistons, better fuel economy, protects horsepower, unsurpassed wear protection, excellent performance in extreme temperatures, exceeds requirements of the following industry specifications, API SN in all previous categories, ILSAC GF5, Miller's Oils, Energy Efficient, EE Long Life Eco, Nano Drive, Low Friction Technology, 5W30, Fully Synthetic Fuel Efficient, Engine Oil, we're going to test that, suitable for the latest technology, petrol and diesel engines, API SL and CF, it claims to be a premium energy efficient motor oil. So which oil offers the best protection against thermal breakdown? We're going to find out in the first test. We'll first measure out 200 grams of oil into each of the oil containers, then crank up the heat to around 420 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. I'll rotate the oil containers every 10 minutes just in case one burner is slightly hotter than the other. I'll also monitor the temperatures of both oils throughout the test to make sure that they are very close to the same temperature during the entire test. Also, both oils will experience an equal amount of time on each burner. So why this test? The NOAC volatility test is an American Society for Testing and Materials test which exposes oil to a lot more heat than this test to simulate engine operating conditions around the upper piston ring area of an engine. High quality oils resist evaporation and thermal breakdown. At the end of this test, we'll find out how much evaporation has occurred with each brand. We'll then be using the cooked oil for additional testing to see which oil is the best. Both oils appear to be doing very well with Miller's Nano Drive oil producing a little bit more vapor than the Penn's oil, but there's only one way to know for sure. It's been right at two hours since the oil was placed on the burner so I'm gonna go ahead and take the oil off allow it to cool down and when we come back we'll see how much evaporative loss occurred with each brand. The Penzo oil started out at 404.73 grams it now weighs 401.08 that's a loss of 3.65 grams. Miller started out at 411 grams it now weighs right at 406 grams that's a loss of 5 grams so the wind goes to Penzo oil. We definitely want to compare cold oil flow performance of both the new and the cooked oils for each brand and we'll do that near the end of the video. To ensure accurate test results, we'll go ahead and place the oil in a freezer that's set to 40 below zero Fahrenheit until tomorrow when we test the cold flow of both brands. In the next test, we'll be comparing the lubricity or film strength of each brand. We'll begin by measuring out 40 milliliters of oil that's already been exposed to heat into each of the test cups. The test will last right at 10 minutes. After the test, we'll compare the size of the wear scars in each bearings to determine which oil provides the best film strength. While this test doesn't simulate engine operating conditions perfectly, it'll provide us with a lot of great information. So when people talk about nano, they are referring to something that's very, very small. So exactly how small is a nanometer? It's about the length that a fingernail grows in one second. One micron equals about a thousand nanometers. A human hair has a diameter of about 50 microns, which is about 50,000 nanometers. So obviously a nanometer is very small. As it turns out, many of the detergent, dispersant, and anti-wear additives that are already in both oils are very small and could be considered nanoparticles. 
Miller's Oil is on the left and the Penn's Oil is on the right. Amazing difference between the two brands. I'm really surprised to see Miller's come out on top on this one showing an 8% smaller wear scar. This oil must have a very robust motor oil additive package. Obviously the Penn's Oil has a very good base oil and the additive package is also pretty good from past testing. So it's going to be very interesting to look at the lab analysis results to see exactly what they're putting in this Miller's Nano Drive oil. Miller's Nano Drive oil claims to offer better fuel efficiency. We'll find out if it does in the next test using an electronic fuel injected generator. We'll first test the Penn's oil. After I drain out the oil that's in the generator now, I'll add right at one quart of the Penn's oil. The oil level is full. I'll first warm up the engine for around five minutes. Now that the engine is fully warmed up, I'll turn off the fuel supply to purge the fuel system of all fuel. I'll go ahead and top off the 500 milliliter fuel cell with non-ethanol gasoline. Once the test begins, I'll power up five halogen lights to place a load on the generator. After 15 minutes, I'll unplug the lights. We'll see how long the engine will run until completely out of fuel. Twenty-one minutes and about sixteen seconds is the time to beat. So we're going to change out the pens oil and put in the nano oil to see if it can do any better. The Penn's oil lasted 21 minutes and 16 seconds. The Miller oil finished almost the exact same time. Very little difference between the two brands. Maybe another couple seconds out of the Miller's. When it comes to selecting a high quality motor oil, cold oil performance is a huge factor. An oil that flows easily when it's cold begins lubricating moving parts of an engine sooner than an oil that doesn't flow easy. Let's kick off the cold oil flow test and see which oil flows the best when it's very cold. New Miller's oil is in lane one, cooked Miller's lane two, cooked Penn's oil lane three, new Penn's oil lane four. And Penn's oil, both new and cooked, are out of the gate very quickly. The Miller's Nano Drive is finally on the move with the new oil out of the gate first, then the cooked. The Penn's oil is now really moving quickly. To catch the pens oil, Miller's needs to change gears from nano drive to overdrive, but it may just be too late. And the pens oil is heading down the final stretch in overdrive, showing no mercy on the high-tech nano drive oil. And it's the new pens oil finishing first, finishing ahead of the cooked pens oil by a fraction of an inch and seven inches ahead of the new Miller's and about eight and a half inches ahead of the cooked Miller's. Great job by team pens oil with a huge win over Miller's. Very interesting results regarding the oil analysis reports. Molybdenum is an anti-wear additive. Check out the molybdenum levels for each oil. Miller's has 769 parts per million, the most I've ever seen in a motor oil. Penn's oil has 53 parts per million, which is very close to normal. Boron is considered a detergent dispersant. Penn's oil has a slight advantage at 127 versus 76 for the nano drive oil. 
Calcium is a detergent dispersant, and Pennzoil has a slight advantage at 2,540 compared to 2,455 for the millers. Pennzoil also has a slight advantage with magnesium, another detergent dispersant at 21 compared to 9 for the millers. Phosphorus and zinc are anti-wear additives, and the clear advantage goes to millers with 1,459 parts per million phosphorus and 742 for the Pennzoil. The zinc levels for the millers are at 972 compared to 807 for the Pennzoil. So millers definitely has a much more robust anti-wear additive package than the Pennzoil, and this makes sense when you consider that Miller's is designed for use in a gasoline and diesel engine, and diesels typically have higher levels of detergents, dispersants, and anti-wear additives. Regarding the viscosity, Miller's does have a slightly higher viscosity compared to Pennzoil. The Pennzoil has a slightly higher flash point at 440 degrees compared to 430 for the Millers. The TBN or the oil's ability to resist becoming acidic over time, Pennzoil has a slightly better TBM at 8.6 compared to 7.3 for the Millers. I'm really surprised that Millers did such a good job against Pennzoil Ultra Platinum. In the end, in my opinion, Pennzoil is a better oil. Now Miller's is API SL, which is for 2004 and older vehicles, while the Pennzoil is approved for the newest vehicles. Pennzoil seems to have a better base oil, it flows better when it's cold, and it demonstrated less evaporative loss, while Miller seems to have a better additive package. I've had a lot of viewers request that we test MOS2, so I went ahead and bought some. So I'm looking forward to testing this in a future video, so hopefully we can blend some MOS2 into some motor oil and boost its performance. All my video ideas, including this one, come from viewers, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. I read and reply to as many comments as possible. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care and look forward to next time.